here's now a little more advanced system running. It is basically doing the same EMFI glitching as in the last video, just by yeah, probing in every possible spot in the X, Y and Z direction. And you can see it will start like at the corner, will go up and down the whole chip and also will check for the distance to it. And you can see the closer it gets to the chip, every now and then the LED gets off, which means the, uh, the glitch did trigger a reset of the chip. And should the LED ever like green, it is a successful glitch. This is also recorded on the PC. So afterwards we have some results to say, okay, where's the best spot to glitch for a reset or for the real glitch we want to see. This will take a few hours until it's finished. The installation is now the target board. It is screwed onto the 3D printer. It has the Pico EMP and yeah, the chip with bearer to coordinate the I.O. part. And other than that, the J-Link uh, flasher is just to have control over the custom firmware in case it needs some edit also. And here we got some first results. So this is now the Z-axis. We are probing for around, around about two millimeters in height and 15 millimeters in Y and so far 0.3 millimeters in X direction. So there will be way more shifts in the end. This is now like the violet region is where the chip did reset on the glitch and the yellow region is where nothing happened. So far there was no successful glitch at all, but this should change in yeah like a few hours or even days when everything is done and after the whole chip was analyzed and we have a heat map of the best glitch position this board can re be replaced with the real target which still has the stock firmware on it and then we can go to the position with the best spot or the best glitching possibilities and try to glitch the bootloader itself at the right moment. So this all is just now to only know where to glitch and later we can then yeah, really glitch at that position at the right time in the hope to dump the original firmware out of it. And that's the success I was looking for. It's currently dumping the flash from the microcontroller and as you can see previously we did uh, read this 19 string which means like flash is locked but afterwards at this offset we now have read zero which is the unlock state or the okay state and if everything goes right we can take a look inside the firmware in a moment this is now also actually the real target already. So if that was successful, the project is basically done. And yeah, let's just wait a few seconds. Also, in theory, even JTAG should be enabled right now. I will only touch it after the dump was finished, of course. And then we should be able to use yeah, the Vega to connect to it. Let's wait for this to be finished. Okay. Now let's try to connect. That does not look good. So let's take a look inside of the file itself. And let's see what's inside of it. And well, that looks already quite good. On 1FC, there should be this 8765 and so on. So this is the lock bit or the lock word. If this is set, normally the readout would be not possible. 
but as we can see, it was. So, and that rounds up the successful exploit and readout of the firmware from the NXP LPC 2388. This method will most likely also work on the LPC 2364 and further, it's the chip series, even the LPC 17 something, which also already has this brown out with the very fast triggering. And so while this is not really a manual on with every step needed, it can give you an idea of how to find the solution just step by step and that even while it looks like there's nothing to get, it sometimes works. And the next step is now for me to, yeah, check the firmware out and check out how the firmware update works since the main goal of this is something different overall, of course, not the extraction of the firmware was the goal. It is a device that does show a logo on the screen when it's in standby mode. And the goal is to change this logo to something custom. But since the firmware is locked with the key to the person who did set the logo, it cannot be changed and every firmware update is signed for the specific device as well. So I can also not um, update the firmware to a different one with a different logo. And now is the hope, of course, to extract everything needed and change everything needed to get the logo to another version, to another logo. And yeah, see you next time.